Hello and welcome to Sex in the News. Tonight we're going to talk a little bit about some of the uh, results from this election that we just had. Uh, some of the bills that were put on the ballots, uh, some of them being uh, uh, constitutional amendments of some of the states, and we'll see what we have to look forward to uh, in both 2020 and beyond. Yes, it's good news. We'll start with the good news, yes. right? A, uh, the, the nation's first sex ed fight to be decided um, in a statewide referendum. Referendum 90 in Washington state uh, was approved by the voters. Way to go. Mm -hmm. uh, sex education referendum allowing a wide-ranging mandate for public schools to stand. Um, well, the referendum allows this mandate to stand mm -hmm. uh, and take effect uh, for teaching comprehensive sex ed in the very liberal state of Washington. Right. And we talked about this months ago on the, on the show when it first really became news because, you know, this, is, this was historic. Uh, this was the first time that you had local politics and state politics that were at odds. Mm -hmm. And what happened was they threw this back to the voters. First time a sex ed mandate was put into a referendum. Mm -hmm. And boy, did that bite him in the butt. Well, went well. Mm -hmm. That's right. And uh, it was overwhelming, too. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was something like 62% uh, to 38% voting against it. Nice. And, and they really thought that they were going to sort of get this over by putting it out to a popular vote. Mm. And the money that they put in was just, you know, sick. But uh, good going, Washington. We're proud of you. Yeah, on to other states that mm -hmm. maybe don't deserve so much. Well, praise. I'll tell you what, let's keep the good news going one okay. more time. Right? Okay. There's still a little bit of positive. Yeah, Colorado is yeah. a mixed bag. Right. No, well, Colorado's actually been pretty consistent with this. Okay. Uh, when we look at Colorado, there's two things that we can, we can talk about that happened on Tuesday in Colorado. One of them is that Coloradians uh, just passed Proposition 118 which was uh, a family leave uh, act. They now join uh, just a handful of states in this country requiring employers to provide 12 weeks of paid time off for childbirth and family emergencies. Hmm. All right, I wonder those. if that includes uh, uh, paternity leave for dads. Well, there is, that is a part of it, yes. Right? Not the full 12 weeks. The 12 weeks is really for the mom, but you know, for if your kid gets sick, and especially if dad is a caregiver, he absolutely uh, uh, gets to be a part of that as well. So that's, that's a big thumbs up for, for Colorado. And there is another uh, thumbs up for Colorado, uh, because there was another ballot initiative, like there have been and are going to be many more of these mm. ballot initiatives. But yes. in uh, Colorado, one of the ballot, initi ballot initiatives was uh, to ban all abortions after 22 weeks of pregnancy. And this is another one that the people of Colorado overwhelmingly rejected. Right. right? And that's, that's really important. Overwhelmingly rejected. Uh, and that's, uh, again, a really good thing. So that's two thumbs up for Colorado. Yeah. Uh, as of this taping, we still don't know who the president is. That's right. Uh, and I guess, that's right. do we know if uh, Hickenlooper is the new senator from Colorado? I think that was pretty much projected. I think that was projected. As a win. Yeah, but I'm not going to say because I haven't been checking the other state uh, Senate races uh, okay. as closely. Um, we can go back to the Deep South, or mm -hmm. well, Louisiana, which is usually different from the rest of the South, but um, Louisiana voters approved uh, Amendment Number 1. That was by a big... Uh, that, more right, as 60, a similar margin. To yeah. almost 40% margin that this proposed amendment is just in case the Supreme Court might happen mm -hmm. to with Amy Coney Barrett and the half a dozen uh, bills that are champing at the bit to be brought to the Supreme Court yeah. for challenging Roe v. Wade. Uh, this Louisiana amendment to the state's constitution mm -hmm. would, just in case Roe versus Wade is overturned, 
This amendment would prevent the state courts from declaring abortion restrictions unconstitutional at the state level. Right. right. And Louisiana joins Alabama and West Virginia mm -hmm. and Tennessee who've done this over the past uh, right. several elections. Right. And to be clear, what that means is that if the federal mm. law, Roe versus Wade, is overturned, which it likely will be given the way this court is stacked now. Right. Uh, that means that there will be absolutely no protection, no funding that will go into abortion in any of these states. And there are, there are a lot of other uh, uh, legislative bills and constitutional amendments that are lining up oh, in a lot of these states that are getting ready now that they have their people. And, you know, unfortunately, it really almost doesn't matter who does ultimately win this presidential election. Well, it does, but I get your point. Right? The because damage is done. The damage is done. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're really kind of already there. Um, so, again, we have to watch out Louisiana, and what's scary to me about that is how overwhelming that vote was in, in Louisiana. Mm -hmm. All right, so especially for you millennial and Gen Z people out there, please do not take for granted that your access to contraception, access to women's reproductive health, including abortion, is something you can take for granted. It is very much in peril. Mm -hmm. And you really do need to be aware of that, and uh, don't let it get any worse, please. And I'm asking you this as a guy, an old guy. <laughs> right. So this is, this is the really our women? life. Where's right. we need more marches with pussy hats? That's right. That's right. We normally like to finish this off with our sort of tribute hmm. to uh, what we call poetic justice. And I think we're going to do it a little bit differently uh, this time. Uh, yeah. We actually have two people that we want to honor. Well, the uh, South Carolinian and um, um, Kentuckian? Kentuckian voters. Right? You, yes. get, you get what you voted for. That's right. You <sighs> Kentucky voters, South Carolina voters, you people collectively mm. are our poetic justice for the week. You yeah. Enjoy saw six more fit years. to reelect the likes of Lindsey Graham and, and that and, evil and the, tortoise. The Sith Lord. The Sith Lord. Yes. Mitch McConnell. Mitch McConnell, who will, will continue. hopefully be the minority. Later. Well, I mean, I keep my fingers crossed, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not really very hopeful. Right. So unfortunately, they are going to be staying in uh, our Senate. And you know what? Uh, again, like you say, you kind of you get what you pay for. So uh, I hope those of you in Kentucky and South Carolina sort of enjoy what you've unleashed. Mm -hmm. right? And uh, just so you know, the rest of us don't appreciate it. <laughs> That'll do it for this week's Sex in the News. We are the Siegel Brothers. <laughs>